okay that's great so guys basically we are here for a webinar that i already planned last week so as you can see on your screen screen right now so this webinar is about this webinar is about 3d printable thread designs using autodesk fusion 360 so even in the snapshot on the bottom left bottom right corner you can see that this uh, an example i had already attached it's a 3d printable thread so uh, the basic difference between the threads is like uh, the machine machine thread works differently especially the metal ones and the 3d printed thread threads work differently so as you can see these are 3d printed threads and also the mating part that we can call it a nut part or something like that so we got something like this so we're going to talk about this like how we can design it something that will be 3d printable and is going to fit together uh, when we'll try to assemble them so this is the basically agenda for the workshop so if i'll move on to my second page as you can see uh, the basic agenda that we're going to consider into this workshop is like why fusion 360 so the first thing that we're going to talk about is like why i'm considering fusion 360 for most of my designs then we'll move on to our next agenda that is we'll dive into fusion 360 and we'll learn how we can create a 3d printable design 3d printable thread using autodesk fusion 360 and once we are done with that since this workshop is just for 60 minutes i mean for one hour so once we are done with 3D printable thread, we'll move on to the Q&A session. Like if you got any questions, any queries, you can uh, ask with me in the inside the chat box, or you can also unmute yourself and ask it questions. And after that, uh, we'll talk about some free and paid learning resources available on the internet uh, for Fusion 360 especially, for 3D printing and for CAD, definitely. So these are the basic agenda that we're going to cover today into this workshop, into this session, into this webinar, whatever you call it. So let's move on to our next phase. Like the first thing is like why Fusion 360? Why I'm considering Fusion 360 as my as a default tool for all my workshops, all my CAD projects that I am doing. So here are the few points I noted down over here. Uh, the reason is the first thing, it's a cloud-based CAD, CAD CAM tool. And when I say cloud-based, this means like you can access to your files, you can access your design, you can access get access to this software anywhere around the world. You don't, it, it, it is not a PC specific or a computer specific software. Uh, what you get is a account, you get a cloud account uh, onto which you can log in onto any PC, any computer if you have the user ID and password. And you can use Fusion 360 just by installing a small piece of software and you can start using the software. Also, you will get access to all of your data, all of your designs that you had already worked on the Fusion 360. So that's why I prefer the software most because it gives me a freedom to work from anywhere and it's also cloud-based CAD CAM tool. So uh, it's easy to manage. Uh, I don't have, I don't need a very uh, fancy PC or something like that to run this software. Second thing, it's free for students and educators. When I say educators, I mean uh, those who are into teaching uh, profession or like uh, research or something so for them the software is free and for students also those who have valid college id card and the stuff like that they can get access to this software for free for one year like you can start from the sketch on a 30-day trial period and once the trial period is over you can activate your student license so in total you are going to get 13 months of uh, free so software access and there is nothing like on when you are on a student license you're going to get a some limitations it's it's similar to the commercial one uh, that you're going to get so that is the benefit of this software this fusion 360 software next thing it's easy to install i told you you will you just need to start, download a small piece of uh, setup onto your pc it's around 700 mb and you just need to install that setup but only thing you need is like whenever you are using fusion 360 uh, you must need access to internet 
that's the most important thing so it's easy to install you can quickly get it started in around 10 to 20 minutes max and you can start using fusion 360 on any of the computer or laptops now the last thing is uh, as i already told since this software runs on cloud so you don't need a very strong hardware like you you don't need a very high processing processors or high high end graphics card and stuff like that you just you can use this software in any normal pc as well so this is one of the most important benefit of fusion 360 because uh, if you talk about the students those who don't have access to very fancy pc and hardware they can easily get started into their normal laptop and pc and start exploring what is cad how to use fusion 360 for their different educational and commercial projects so this is why i prefer fusion 360 most of the time apart from this there are other solutions also available in the market but i prefer this one uh with respect to other one is because it's from autodesk company the same company who has created the softwares like autodesk inventor software like autocad so it gives me a trust while using Fusion 360, and that's why I, I prefer this software. Now we'll move on to our next slide. It's like how to download this software. So it's easy, guys. Just visit the official Autodesk website. I think uh, the most of the people who are attending my workshops and seminars, webinars are engineers. So we are uh, intelligent enough to find any piece of software onto the internet. So just Visit the Autodesk official website, create your simple account like we used to do on Facebook or Instagram and the social media like that. In the similar manner, just create a simple account using your, uh, by con taking a user ID and password. Then you can download a, a small setup that I, al I had already told you. It's around 700 MB. And once you have down uh, downloaded that setup, you can install that setup and just log in into your Fusion 360 account that you have just created on this step using your username and password and you are done you will get access to the complete workspace so it's easy to get started in fusion 360 now the next thing in this video we're going to talk about like how to create 3d printable threads what are what are all the consideration we need to think about while doing while designing such threads so the things will fit with each other and uh, will and we'll learn like how we can do that and for that now we had to move on to Fusion 360. So let me open my Fusion 360 screen. And I hope all of you can see my Fusion 360 screen. If yes, just write Y in the chat box. I'm just waiting for any few answers, few replies. Yeah, OK, OK, thank you so much. And uh, the name is Janos. OK, Janos, thank you so much. So as you can see, uh, this is my Fusion 360 screen. So by default, whenever you will first start your Fusion 360, you will get the screen like this. Maybe it will be a little bit different because I had turned off few of the options onto my default Fusion 360 screen based on my, my preference, my way of doing work, my way of uh, using tools on different software. So maybe we will get a little bit different kind of user interface over here, but uh, most of the things will be similar to this only. So as you can see, we are into Fusion 360 now. So the first thing to start designing, uh, the first thing we always do, there are few, few simple things that I always recommend into all my workshops and seminar. And those things are like uh, the first thing. First thing you have to do is save your design. So just click on the save icon and give it a name. Let's write it thread, simple name. I just given it thread and here you can see the location it's getting saved in this folder Fusion 360 workshop so it's 100 percent correct i will just click on save and here you can see the moment i had clicked on save the file name just got updated and if i will open my data panel over here that is always on the left side of my fusion 360 screen here you can see i had just saved this thread file inside this fusion 360 workshop folder so this is my data panel where whatever the designs and uh, the steps I had worked so far is getting saved onto over here. And these are all stored in the cloud. So all the time, if I want to get access to any of these designs, I can just log in into my Autodesk account and I will get access to these things. And since it's uh, dependent on the internet, so the speed of your internet connectivity is really very important. Now I will close this data panel. So it will just get hidden on the left side again. 
and here you can see this is my default page of uh, doing designing something inside fusion 360 so the first thing that we're going to do is we'll start with a sketch and before starting with a sketch a uh, very important consideration that we're going to check is the document settings and the document setting is like the units that we're going to follow so if i will expand the document setting option over here into this design tree as you can see this is my units active units right now and it's millimeter so if you are a in a foot or inch specific person you can just click on this icon and you will get a box like this here you can see and if you will expand over here we got different kind of units available over here like centimeters meter inches foot so if you are comfortable with some different system of units you can select that but i prefer to work in millimeter most of the times so it's okay right now and it's default over here millimeters so i am not going to change at this moment so but if you are comfortable with something else you are definitely you can definitely try out some different system of units as well and all the time whenever we are talking about designing or the stuff like this if you are getting any question into your mind like uh, if you have any specific question or anything that is related to fusion 360 you can just comment below in the chat box comment in the chat box into the zoom zoom session so i will i will try to answer them uh, over here right now so as you can see uh, we are back into our fusion 360 and we are going to design start designing a thread so the first thing that we are going to do is we'll click on this create sketch option over here and right now we are into the design work workspace as you can see so in fusion 360 basically uh, they had separated different tools based on the industry specific requirements into different workspaces for example if i will go on to the render workspace all tool will get updated and all the tools that we can see over here is related to rendering like how we can create how we can generate more realistic product images so in this workspace we we have all the tools related to that but since we are going to do to do design so we'll move on to the design workspace and inside designers workspace we got different kind of tools already available over here and inside design workspace already they had separated all the tools into multiple categories like as you can see right now we are into solid tool section so inside solid tool section all the tools that is over here is related to solid modeling like generally we used to do uh, as a mechanical engineer for example uh, design of a tank or design of something crusher or design of uh, silos or anything that we are any kind of product design that we are doing is a solid modeling design and if i'll move to the surface design it's that all the tools that is available over here is related to surfacing like the the most specific surface tool is like catia so all the tools that we can find inside catia is available over here but the catia is more kind of specific surfacing tool so definitely we are not going to get that much of freedom but we have some set of tools already over here that we can experiment with then we got the mesh work environment where we got some mesh editing tools like if you got an stl file uh, having number of mesh mesh surfaces mesh vertices so you can import those files into fusion 360 and just come on to your mesh work environment and you can play with it like what what are the possibilities then we got sheet metal workspace like if you are doing any sheet metal specific project you can check out this section over here that is sheet metal section then we got similarly the plastic section over here so if you are a for a plastic product designer uh, that that is going to be molded or something like that so you can try the try out this these tool sections because they had already provided few customized tools over here that will help you to uh, bring down the design time as much lower as possible when it comes to plastic designing and in the last it's called utilities so utilities is basically common for all the design section so we'll move back on to the solid work space and first thing that we're going to do is like we'll start with a sketch we'll start with creating a sketch so i will click on this create a sketch option over here and then i had to select a plane onto which i want to create my sketch similar to any cad software so this time i'm going to select this top plane as a sketch plane so i will just click on that and here you can see my plane just got activated and as you can see and this is my origin of my design sex design page over here and the first thing that we're going to do is since we're going to design the uh, 
I mean a uh, bolt I will say so I will just go on to this section create panel over here and here we'll go on to the thing called polygon here you can see and here I'm going to select this circumscribed polygon so I had selected that I will create a polygon of having six six number of sided sides and I will make sure that the millimeter that I'm taking is around 50 so here you can see here is the 50 mm polygon that we had just created now what I will do I will create a circle onto the center so I will just click on this circle tool it's a center diameter circle type so we'll just activate that we'll select the center origin we'll drag outside like this and circle just got created but we had not defined any dimension for this circle as you can see yeah. so i will just go on to the sketch dimension tool like we used to do in solidworks or any other tool so we'll activate this sketch dimension tool then we'll click on this circle we'll drag outside we'll give it the dimension let's say 30 millimeter Let's decrease this one as well. I don't need this one 50, let's say 40, or maybe a little bit lesser, uh, 30. let's make it 25. Yes. And as you can see, this there are two sketches that we had created right now. The one is the black one, and the other is the blue one. I hope you can see that, right? And if I will expand my sketch folder over here, and here you can see the sketch icon right now there is a rectangle and there is a small pencil icon on the corner right so just notice notice it down it's different right now now if i will constrain this outer thing like for example if the black sketch shows that it is a constrained sketch this means that you cannot modify it further just by dragging like this but the blue sketch is not constrained one not fixed one so if if I will drag it out here you can see I'm able to rotate it so I don't want it this to be free I want this to be fixed so I had to apply a constraint over here so I will activate this horizontal vertical constraint I will select this top point and the center here you can see it just got constrained the moment I had selected it just got constrained horizontally and the sketch also got black so this is what we wanted and the moment both sketches got black black in this sketch our sketch has this lock icon over here. This means that inside this sketch one, whatever the entities we had created, we had defined those completely. That's why they all are black and this is small red icon. So always whenever you are creating a sketch, any sketch for any 3D design, try to constrain them like this. So that is the best thing you can do. So you will have a full control onto your design. So just give me a second, guys. I can see a small question coming into the chat box. Joe Paul is asking, what was the polygon you had selected? So see, polygon is basically like uh, any shape having unlimited number of uh, sides. So the size is, sides are not defined. So when you will activate this polygon, here you can see, you can either select circumscribe, inscribe, it's completely onto you. But let's say I had selected inscribe. And the moment I will define the origin, the next thing I have to define the number of sides. So let's say I will change the number of sides to five. So here you can see the polygon is updating to pentagon, right? If I will change this to four, it will change that to rectangle. If I will change that this to six, it will change back to hexagon. So it's not really important what polygon I had selected. The important thing is like, what kind of shape do you need? What is the size of your shape? That is the important thing. So, and how many number of sides your polygon has. So uh, that's why I had selected, you, you can select any kind of polygon and then you can define the sizes. For example, here you can see uh, my hex bolt is having size of 50 if I will uh, measure it from this side to this side. And this circle is 30 millimeter in diameter. So it's completely onto us, like what specific size we need, we can select that. I hope you had ans I had answered your question, Joe Paul. Okay, so now as you can see, we had already created two sketches and now both of them are completely defined. So what I'm going to do now is I will just click on this finish the sketch icon over here. I don't know if you can see if you can see my screen. Uh, can you see uh, my right side of my screen or is there anything else coming onto this area like this Zoom chat box or something like that? Just comment in the chat box if you can see that my complete screen, complete Fusion 360 screen.
i can see few members are again joined okay okay that's great so as you can see uh, if i will just click on this green icon over here uh, finish the sketch since we had already created the sketch and defined this completely so yes so what i will do i will just click on this finish the sketch icon over here and we just came back to our solid modeling workspace because this is the sketch one we had just created and we tried to define the, that completely without leaving any of the dimension and the measurement now what i will do i will use my orbit tool over here and will rotate it like this little bit so we'll able to see that in isometric view or any 3d kind of view so here you can see now i will activate my extrude tool i will select both the profiles so guys what is profile as you can see when i had extrude, uh, activated the extrude tool this new box appeared new uh, having lots of different sections right and the first thing was definitely this type and the type is definitely we had activated the extrude tool and then the profile so the profiles are basically the closed spaces or the area in in 3d workspace on in 3d industry whenever you are doing any 3d based on the sketches profiles are all those areas that is completely enclosed by number of sides or any kind of shape so here you can see we got two profile one is this profile and one is this profile enter inner profile so since we needed a solid base for our hex bolt that we are going to create so that's why i had selected both the profiles and then i i got this arrow so i will just drag it towards bottom here you can see i'm getting a preview of my 3d so this one this base i just want to create minus 18 so i will just write minus 18 over here and either we can write over here or we can also write it over here so if i will press plus 18 so it will start extruding in towards the upward dire direction but we need towards the download downward direction so we had written minus 18 so these in symbols are just to change the directions okay now i will just press okay here you can see the base we had just created and whenever you will use your first sketch that was uh, in case in our case it was sketch 1 so whenever you will use your first sketch to create your first solid model by default the sketch will get turned off so just come back to your design tree again turn on your sketch here you can see so again i can see my sketch now again i am going to activate this extrude tool okay so jopal if you got any question just just ask because there is no limitation like you can ask only one or two question you can ask any number of of questions until we are continuing this session okay so okay. now again i am going to activate this extrude tool here you can see from over here and then i will select this circle this profile this circular profile and will give it some height let's let's give it a height of 90 mm or 80 mm whatever height you want to give it's completely on to you because this is the sample thread this is the sample nut and bolt setup that we are going to create so it's not really important uh what is the height what is the width we are taking the all all the only important thing thing that we are going to talk into this complete workshop is like whatever we are designing it will be 3d printable right so i will just press okay and here you can see here you can see this is what we had created guys right now uh before moving on to our next step uh let just give me a second okay now if i'll move on to our next step the next step is that we are going to develop a small bolt at this point right so for that what i will do i will click on this face so before that what i want to do is i want to create a new sketch plane because by default in fusion 360 if i will turn on my origin here you can see we got three different planes only right and these planes are at this position but we need another plane parallel to this plane okay i need another plane parallel to this plane on to this area so for that what i can do i can move on to the construct section over here and here we got a tool called offset plane right we can create offset new plane at any distance so i will activate this tool then i will select the plane that i want to copy and offset here you can see and then i will drag it out like up, upward like this and let's say at 60 mm or okay let's say at 60 mm i want to create this new plane so i will just press okay and here you can see this new plane just got created and whenever we had 
at the moment we had created this new plane a new folder just got created inside my design tree and that's called construction and if i will expand this construction folder here you can see this here is my new plane that we had just created now what i will do i will turn off the origin and all the planes i will only keep this plane turned on and then i am going to create some sketch onto this plane now so i will activate my create a sketch tool will select this plane here you can see now we are ready to create a sketch on that plane so if i will just rotate it like this here you can see that plane is active to create a sketch right if you can see that okay so the first thing uh, that we are going to do is we are going to project this same shape that we had created for the base onto that plane so for that we got a tool called project tool and the what project tool will do you can project any of the shape onto any of the plane so if i will activate my project tool and you can see now we'll move back to 3d and if i will click select this edge it it is getting projected onto our new plane here you can see so i had to select all the edges one by one since i want to project the complete shape onto our new plane here you can see so six edges we had selected because that was the hexagon having six number of edges and then i will and before pressing okay what i will do i will select this circle also here you can see it's getting projected and we'll press okay here you can see this is the shape we had just created now now to make a to since we are trying to create a bolt over here so for that this circle that we had just created was having diameter of 30 mm if you can see on the right bottom corner over here it says it's 30 mm in diameter so i'm going to create a new circle offset with this one with let's say having a dis uh, offset distance of 0.8 mm right so so i just want to give some clearance so the bolt will fit with the nut that's what i'm trying to do so that's why i had given 0.8 mm of clearance from the this cylinder to the new bolt hole that we are going to create so i will press okay here you can see this is the shape new profile that we we had just created i will click on the finish sketch then again i will activate my extrude tool will select the profile and will drag it towards bottom and here you can see we are getting a shape like bolt and again it's not 20 mm let's keep it 80 mm 18 mm so it's completely on to us like how much we want to keep it right i will press okay here again so we got the basic shape of nut and bolt but it's not having it, it is not having any kind of thread so far so that we're going to do now and before that i will turn off this sketch as well so here you can see we got two different bodies one is this base body and one is this this one so if i will expand my body folder over here here you can see we got two body one is this base bo base body and then this nut body so i will rename it i will just make a right click i will click on the rename and will write it nut and this one i will just write it bolt okay not bolt sorry it's bolt okay and until this point if you have any question guys just comment in the chat box i am ready to answer and i can see jopal has asked another question like if we select negative number when we print when we print will it cut the bit below in the y axis no it's nothing like that so guys uh, there is it's a very important question he has asked uh, so when i will just turn on the origin so here you can see so origin is basically a reference plane you can say reference origin uh, in any of the design or any of the cat tool you will be able to see so origin doesn't means like if you are creating something below that it will cut or something above that it will be original thing so it's just for the reference for you so origin is basically like you will be able to constrain your object around your origin it's like if you want to provide a dimension you can take this origin as a reference and you can dimension your object with reference to that so it is just for that it's nothing like if i am designing something below my origin it will get cut or it will get subtracted it's nothing like that it is just for the reference so the complete design space as you can see even if i will zoom out and something like that so whatever the design space you can see it's all available for your designing only so whatever you will do whatever you will make is is for designing there is nothing like uh, the things will get cut or something like that whatever you will do into this white space you will be able to uh, 
convert that to drawing or anything that you uh, any any output that you want so it's uh, there is no constraint related to that okay okay thank you thank you thank you jopal for asking this question because uh, i see lots of people are having this confusion now since you can see we had created nut and volt now we are going to apply some threads onto it so how we can do that so for that we'll go on to the create panel over here and here you can see the tool called thread i hope you all of you can see that so if i will activate this tool called thread here you can see now the first thing it is asking me to select the face onto which i want to apply my thread right the first thing it is asking me to select the face so i will turn off the origin so the things will be more clear to us so this is the face onto which we want to apply our thread so i will select that and here you can see the moment i had selected the face it is giving me a thread but it's not like uh, engraved on the surface it's like a, just a image wrapped around my object right it's not looking like the original one right so just give me a second there are still some people who had not just joined this webinar but they are looking for the link to join uh, i don't know if it's easy to find but still people sometimes face difficulty in finding the links anyway let me just drop drop it in the group again okay so as you can see this is not like actual thread it is just like image wrapped around my model because we had not turned on this feature called model so this is just a preview right now so if you will apply this thread it will it is going to look something like this so if i will turn on this option here you can see the moment i had just turned on this option i can see that the actual thread just got created right if you can see that the actual thread just got created and the size size is the most important thing whenever you're creating thread for 3d printing right so the diameter of that that cylinder was 30 mm right so it has automatically detected that uh, m30 kind of thread he is uh, it is going to apply onto our model so definitely it's correct since our diameter was 30 mm so m30 we are going to apply and also we can change different kind of standards available over here based on the industry like if you are of some different country they are going to use some different standards like ansi standards or some uh, some other standards like din pipe threads so acme threads acme threads so such kind of threads are popular in the industry but in our country in my country uh, i don't know from which country you are but in my country uh, iso metric profiles are very common but if we'll, we can also check the threads like this these ones like ansi metric m profile so you can see the moment i will i had changed the thread type uh, standard the thread is also getting updated here you can see okay let let me check the ansi metric okay and the size is 30 it's correct it's already detected by based on the diameter of the object we we had covered and then the designation so this is the important thing like if i want to increase the number of threads onto uh, my thread part here you can see if i will change this one it will update that so the minimum that the minimum thread that is possible onto uh, onto your design that will be 3d printable most of the times i recommend is having a m30 into 2 so this 2 mm is the thing that you always had to consider whenever you are designing something for 3d printing but here we are going to consider this 3 uh, m30 into 3 because that is having that is going to have a more, more detailed features as you can see over here and also the class will be 6g you can also select 4g so it, it is not going to make difference because in most of our design and whatever the class that you're going to select over here or whatever the designation you're going to select over here make sure that it is also you are considering the same thing onto the volt also or sorry onto the nut also so otherwise the things are not going to mate with each other right they, they will have a mating problem so just to avoid that thing you have to select same standard on both the both of your objects for example for this bolt i had selected this m30 6g right hand so for the nut also we had to select the similar thing same exact exact settings otherwise these two things are not going to fit with each other now in the direction you can select either left hand or right hand so it it's like uh in most of the cases we used to select right hand but you can also select left hand and if you will Take this option called remember size so whenever you will you're going to start creating a thread for your nut it will automatically select this these predefined settings so i'm just clicked on this remember size and will press ok and 
here you can see this is the thread we had just created onto our design right so it's looking i i think it's looking really great as you can see so tell me in the chat box how it's looking otherwise uh, now we are going to do for the nut and before we'll apply threads for the nut we'll repeat the same process we'll go onto the create panel we'll activate the thread tool and we'll select the internal face of our nut. So if I will just turn off the bolt over here, we're going to select this face to create a thread onto the nut. Here you can see. The moment I had selected that face, it's again creating the negative thread onto that face uh, automatically because we had already ticked this option. And if I will press OK, here you can see on the nut also the thread threads got created. And if I will turn on both the things, and it will try to see the intersection so the things will be more clear to us so i will just go into the inspect panel over here activate the section analysis tool and we'll try to create a section onto this plane and here you can see if i will press ok here you can see what what problem you can see over here you can see that the threads are matching or not matching but they are overlapping with each other maybe the orientation is not right for our both the objects. So maybe we had to play with the orientation at this moment. So how we can do that? Let me check. Now what I'm going to do is I will go back to my thread and I will just go back to my design history that is always onto the left bottom corner of your Fusion 360. And whatever the steps you are taking, like the extrude or the sketch or the offset plane is all the steps the tool steps is getting recorded onto your design history. So anytime, if you want to make any design into your Fusion 360 designs, any change to your Fusion 360 design, you can come back to the design history and make edits. For example, in this case, if I want to edit this main thread that we had created on the, this face, I will make a right click and click on this edit feature. Here you can see. Now it is giving me preview like this. So I will change that to, let's say, 3.5 now. OK, I will press OK. And we'll update the same on the other one as well for the nut, 3.5, and we'll press OK. So here you can see the things are looking good, but they are not fitting each other. So what I will do, I will just select the nut over here. I will go onto the Move tool, as you can see over here. And I will move this object by maybe millimeter or 1.2 millimeter or something like that so they will orient the orientation will be correct so that's the way we can try to see here you can see i'm just moving it by let's say 1.25 yes and we'll press okay here you can see that if we'll try to wrap those things fit together we're going to get some clearance but the clearance is not enough over here as you can see the space is really very less so even if we will 3d print these two things they are not going to fit so for that what i will do i will just turn off the nut at this moment and will try to edit this design so for that i will turn off the analysis as well section view and what i will do if i will just go into the front view like this I'm going to apply some fillets. So I will activate my fillet tool. I'm going to apply a fillet uh, and fillet on these two faces. Here you can see. Let's say apply a fillet of 0.4 millimeter or 0.6 millimeter. We'll see like uh, how much of fillet is best for our design. So we are just taking 0.6. And we'll click on this plus icon over here. And for the base also, these bases will apply 0.4. Here you can see. So sometimes when the number of sides or number of edges are more, it is going to take a few seconds to uh, preview the, the threads that it, it is going to take. So here you can see I had applied the fillets. And since it since it's not, it is not going, we are not going to machine this part. So that's why I had applied the fillet because sharp corners are not be able will not be able to print the sharp corners, right? So that's why I had created something like this. So I will press OK. And we'll see how the design is coming. So here you can see. This is how it is looking. Also, in the beginning on the top, as you can see, the sharp edges. So also this is not possible. So I will again activate my fillet tool. We'll select the top face. We'll apply a fillet of 0.6 or maybe a little bit 
ma the maximum fillet that you can apply on the top will be much better so you can try check and try out with different settings like 0.8 if it's it is working good then you can apply or else 0.9 or whatever maximum you can apply on the top is it will be great because whenever you will try to assemble the two parts together so when the threads will begin so it will be more smoother uh, mating if the face of the your thread will be having maximum fillets especially for the case of 3d printing so if i will press okay over here so you can see this is what we got right and at the bottom here okay so this is what we got right and if i will turn back our nut and we'll try to see the section view here you can see the things are good but still on the nut also we had to apply those fillets then only we get we are going to get some clearance and i can notice a small problem over here here you can see uh, a problem of undercut if you can see it over here there is a small problem of undercut and uh, it usually do not happens but let me just check what's the what what can be a problem for this one okay so maybe we had to change that the fillet that we had created to 0.6 mm so uh, 0.4 mm sorry so i will just go back to my fillet i will edit that feature and the box will appear here you can see and here instead of 0.6 we can make it 0.4 i think that's the best way to to optimize the problem that we are facing at this moment so here you can see i just changed that to 0.4 and you can see the moment i had changed uh, the thing is just got updated and it is more clear now right okay okay so and again as uh, we are also getting error on this fillet so the top one so maybe we had to de decrease that as well a little bit if it's possible maybe 0.6 so we'll see how much it is accepting at the top min maximum possible so 0.5 is also not accepting 0.4 we'll try that okay okay let me delete this fillet so we can delete this at this moment and we'll try again let delete this feature and let let just turn off the section so we want to apply the fillet on the top so we'll select the edge and we'll try to apply a fillet and let's say apply a fillet of 0.4 it's not working 0.3 yeah 0.3 is working so that's fine i will press okay now for the nut also we're going to do the same thing guys we're going to apply some fillets onto the thread edges right thread edges so we'll turn off the bolt and here you can see and i will just turn on the analysis so we'll able to see the inside of my nut sorry so i will just activate my fillet and will apply fillet on these two edges first of 0.4 mm here you can see. or maybe we can increase it over here maybe 0.6 or 0.8 is going to work and we'll click on this plus tool over here we are going to also select the base and here 0.4 yes it's it's looking good i will press okay and we'll turn on both the bodies and we'll see if it is coming good yes it is coming good you can see we got more smoother assembly over here and we also got some clearance right and we we can in control that clearance so i will just going to explain you in a moment just give me a second before that uh for the nuts also on the top and the bottom we're going to apply some fillet uh, on this top face and also onto this top face so we, onto these two faces i want to going to apply a fillet of 0.4 or 0.6 because that is the entry point of our both the parts so i want just want to make it the maximum fillets possible here you can see and we'll press okay here you can see this is what we had created so we had created nut and we had created bolt and both of them are like something like this now the problem is the clearance the clearance is not enough over here so to just to increase the clearance what we can do just turn off the bolt we can select the face just select all the faces 
like this just press shift on your keyboard and you will be able to select all the faces as you can see i just selected shift and selected all the faces even the smaller ones i don't want to miss anything and then we got a tool inside fusion 360 that's called press pull so just activate that tool and instead if you want to extend it towards this direction so you can give the positive distance if you want to take it towards the reverse direction, you can give the negative distance. So I will just write minus 0.2. I just want the faces to get back a little bit by minus 0.2 millimeter, here you can see. And the moment I will press OK. And if I will turn on my nut, here you can see. Now we are getting more clearance, right? The things are more clear now. So now, how I am deciding that I had to take 0.2 mm of clearance and 0.4 mm of clearance. So this is the most important question. And, and it's because whenever you're going to 3D print your thread, as you can see for this example, whenever you are going to 3D print your thread, so there is always, you're going to use material, like if you are using PLA, ABS or PETG plastics. So whatever the materials you are going to use, there always have to have some shrinkage right shrinkage features so whatever you are printing is the material is going to shrink by a particular amount maybe 0.01 percent or one percent something like that so that can only be identified by identified by testing your material so whatever the material you are choosing to print this thread for 3d using 3d printing so you can test test that material like how much amount of shrinkage it is giving so you can do that by printing some sample tests, sample prints, like there are cube, uh, there are cubes available on different websites that you can try it, uh, take that file, it is available for free on the internet and test like how, what is your printer, to printer tolerance? What is your 3D printer tolerance? How much is your material tolerance? So those are the stuffs you had to check earlier before started designing your stuffs inside Fusion 360. And once you got the idea, like, you, okay, my 3D printer is having a tolerance of 0.2 millimeters. Like, for example, if you are printing an object of 10 millimeter in height, it will print 10.1 or 10.2 or maybe 9.8. So the dimension is going to vary between plus minus 0.2 millimeters. So accordingly, you had to design your objects like uh, based on your 3D printer tolerance. So first check your 3D printer tolerance that you're going to use. But still for standard practice, uh, the 0.2 mm clearance for 3D printing is good. You will, you will, you're going to get, you're going to get a good uh, kind of clearance in case of the nozzle that you're going to is, is 0.4 millimeter. So that's why I had selected this 0.2 millimeter of clearance over here. And this is what we got. So this is what we had created the nut and bolt that is going to fit with together, fit together. Now, if I want to give it a good more, good looking shape. I can apply some chamfers on these edges. So these are just for, I will say, the chamfers that I'm applying just for the visualization purpose. So it is, it will look more like a nut and bolt, but still the major thing that we, we are talking about is like, if you're designing it for 3D printing, try to create a flat designs, not chamfered on the edges on the top and bottom. At least one side needs to be flat. Otherwise, you will you will have to use lots of support to print those objects, right? Uh, let's say three, one or something like that, and we'll press OK, and here you can see. Now, if I will go onto the inspect panel over here and we'll activate this display component colors, so it will automatically apply two diff different colors. And these bodies are not components at this moment, so I will select both the bodies and we'll make a right click and click create component on, from the bodies. So here you can see, we got two component. The one is this nut and one is this bolt. So this is what we had created so far, guys. And if you if you got any questions, if you have anything, like if you want to ask, ask any, if you have any query or anything about the learning pers perspective, you can just go and ask. Um, I'm just taking a small screenshot with all of you. Just give me a second. Okay, so let me know if you got any questions up to this point. Okay, so we'll just click on the save since uh, I will wait for the question in the chat box. Like 
someone is asking jopal is asking definitely like you do you have a metric table that you could share with us for selecting thread size so there is no need to use any metric table i told you like whenever you are into fusion 360 you will automatically get lots of standard options over here like if you once you will activate the tool you got different kind of settings over here you just need to figure out like if you are in uh, in in your country what kind of design design principles you are following like whether you are following uh, asme standards whether you are following iso standards or maybe din standards so you just have to select that and based on that you can you can just select the diameter and it will automatically apply the best recommended thread for you and then further if you want to modify you can select different settings right so that way you can do Okay, Bhargav is asking, what if we create two separate parts and give constraints in assembly? Assembly. Okay, so it's like uh, we cannot create constraints in assembly. Uh, when we talk about constraints, so constraint is most uh, is all about two D sketching. Uh, it's not about three D uh, part uh, assembly. So assembly, in case of assembly, we can use joints, right? We cannot use constraints in case of three D parts. constraints are all associated with 2d sketches only so in if you want to constrain these two objects as a as a mating part we can use the tool called here you can see that we got a tool called assembly and inside assembly we got different kind of uh, tools over here from where we can create a assembly joints right so we'll get two different bodies and we'll able to see how they are interacting with each other how they are mating with each other so those things we can do using the assembly section inside autodesk fusion 360 yes definitely jo paul so when it will come to 3d printing uh, let's say uh, i i let's say i want to 3d print these two parts right and if i will take this complete assembly and will try to 3d print what what will happen if i am printing my these two objects in this orientation it's not possible if it's possible but what it will do it will start taking lots of support from this face because this this these faces this bottom faces are overhang faces right so something cannot be printed inside air we need something that has to be supported from the bottom so what it what my 3d printer will do from this face it will create support up to this point and then it will start printing the object so there will be lots of waste material instead what i will do i will take both the parts separate and i will print like this one over here and the other on the side of the object so that will be easy way and also will get a good quality of threads as well okay jo joel is asking like is thread portion is required throughout the head portion of the bolt no not really needed what we can do we can se separate the faces uh, this cylinder is not really required i told you it's it's in most of the cases what happens when you are designing for 3d printing is depends upon your requirement if you need it through all the body you can apply thread through all the body if you don't need it you can separate the specific length and you can apply thread on that portion only and once done you can just combine the objects okay so that way you can do uh, even if you if there are lots of nuts and bolts available in the market that will have a thread not through the complete length they will have a thread up to the certain length and the other lengths are like smooth so it's completely on to us like how we want to keep it the most important thing was like it must be 3d printable and it can only be 3d printable if we had considered the right amount of tolerance into our design okay and guys any more questions yes definitely it's possible to give motion when you will apply the joints between these two objects we can animate them like it will be able you will be able to see like uh, they are moving together like a nut and bolt okay jopal is asking what printer do you use cura so yeah uh, jopal it's really important to understand printer is a different thing and the thing that you had written over here cura is a different thing cura is a software not a yes ultimaker is definitely a 3d printer but cura is a software okay so i am not using ultimaker maker ultimaker is really very expensive i cannot afford that i am using a simple chinese kit 3d printer that i had already ordered around 6 uh, years back i remember 
uh, it was a kit printer i had bought it around 200 dollars uh, 200 uh, usd and i had made lots of upgrades onto that 3d printer since uh, the moment i had started learning i had experimented lots of stuff and i had made lots of upgrade onto my 3d printer and now it's working very fine still till today it's working very fine uh, even if something gets uh, means uh, broken or something like that i used to repair them because i know everything about 3d printing right now when it comes to fdm 3d printing uh, i'm not using ultimaker definitely it's it's from a big company i will say it's from a leader and they are very expensive i cannot afford that so my 3d printer it's called tevo tarantula so the model is not available in the market right now but uh, it was a good kit printer uh, for the beginners who just wanted to get started Yes, definitely. You can come back if you will having any print issues. So here you can see. Uh, now we'll move on to our next step. So the next uh, thing is like, uh, what are the free learning resources? So the learning resources are, guys, YouTube is definitely the first learning resource I will recommend because there are uh, there are lots of stuff available on the internet, uh, available on the YouTube. You can check it out. There are lots of good create good creators, amazing creators like. Uh, uh, there are multiple creators uh, around on the YouTube who are creating contents about 3D printing and their contents are really amazing. You can just watch them and try to learn from them. And then the next, if you want to have a good understanding of, about Fusion 360, uh, you will get this Udemy platform where you can register and start learning. And I had also launched my my platform that is academy.3dash.com. Uh, I believe you all of you guys are already registered onto that platform. So there also I, I'm going to there are lots of contents. Some will be free, some will be paid. But so far I had only free sessions. And yes, I are going to get the recording of this session as well onto I'm not sure about the YouTube, but you will be able to find that on to my website onto the same webinar link that we had followed to join this session. So you will find the recordings over there and you will be able to check it out even after this webinar is over. And I hope you all know about me. I'm a full time freelance CAD designer working from home, doing CAD projects, engineering projects and the stuff like that. I am very much active on platforms like LinkedIn, Freelancer, Fiber. And also I do have lots of direct clients and I'm, a, I'm a good in softwares like AutoCAD, Fusion 360, SolidWorks. So if you have any confusion or anything, you can just interact with, with me on the group as well, WhatsApp group. Also, you can at, interact with me on my community tab onto my website. So guys, thank you. Thank you so much for coming and joining this session. It was really uh, Always a great session delivering to all of you. And you have you always had a very amazing questions that I enjoy answering all of them. So thank you, everyone. So just going to finish up this session, Joel. Thank you. Thank you, Jopal. Thank you, Vargab. Thank you, Janos. Thanks. Thank you all for coming and joining this session. We'll see you in the next session. Just be updated onto the group, onto my community, tab onto my website. There will be there is going to be a lots of upcoming free webinars going to be full packed with lots of contents and learning. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for watching.